God bless you, family. God, welcome to the Morning Diva with your brother DJ Sam Rock. It's good to see you again um, on this Morning Devo, on this day, a new day that God created a new day. When you look up at the skies and the stars and the moon and the earth from the aerial view and all that stuff, you get to notice that God created everything like amazingly. Although we don't live in a perfect world, obviously, but God created something amazing. Amen. And if you're honest, so even the atheists have to admit that somebody had to be responsible for everything that we see in the air, on the earth, beneath the earth, in the sea and everything. Someone had to be responsible. Or you could go to the scientific world and say, well, uh, that was all because of evolution and explosion and all that stuff. Um, whatever you want to believe is a decision you make. But when you want to check evidence of what life is and who created life and who God is, if you want to look for evidence, you could find that evidence from creation, looking at creation, observing the things that you know had to be created by someone, had to come from some intelligent being, and then you will find where life is. You will find where life is. So I figured, let me, Um, I was running late. And I was like, wait a minute, Um, I'm not going to not do this morning Devo. I'm not going to not devote my first of the day to the Lord just because I um, overslept a little bit. So a quick story. The reason why it's so late today for the morning Devo is I instead of pressing snooze on my phone, I probably pressed stop. And then I woke up like in a in a like, oh, wow. Yeah, that's how I woke up this morning. Amen. How many people have that happened to before? I'm not the only one. So live life. This is part two. Uh, we had a great um, interaction yesterday on the morning Devo. So I uh, decided let me just run with it. Amen. Because God is on to something. He's always on to something. He's always looking over his creation, always speaking to his people, always giving anyone an opportunity and everyone an opportunity to get into a personal relationship with him. So as you can see on the screen, if you're watching, if not the podcast listeners, I'll put the uh, link up on the podcast page. Did you give your life to Jesus? Like, honestly, did you actually do that? Or did you give your life to a religion? Scan the barcode if you're watching the video. If you're listening, again, I will put the link on the podcast and you can find the link on the other episodes as well. And the question is, did you give your life to Jesus? You scan the barcode, right? And it will take you to a place where you could be honest with you between you and God. It doesn't have to be a whole hoopla in front of other people and all this other stuff between you and God and really come to the conclusion once and for all. Are you following God or are you following a religion? Are you following, you know, a false God? Are you following false teachings? Are you following a religion that um, leads to nowhere? Or are you following the Lord Jesus Christ? Who said, by the way, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father or no one comes to the Father except by him. He said it. I believe him. I believe what he did is to be true. And I happen to believe in someone who came back from the dead to be uh, the one that we should be focused on. Amen. So live life part two. How does fearing God lead to life? Right. Oh, just fear God. How does that lead to life? How does that work out? Um, we're going to talk about that real briefly today on the Morning Devo. Amen. Matthew, God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you. Amen. Oh, thank you so much. Yesterday, Devo was awesome. God is awesome daily. Amen. <clears throat> so I just tapped into what he was doing and, and, and with us yesterday. Good morning, Sister Joyce. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you as well. And bless you and your family. So listen, live life part two. Let's get into it. How does fearing God lead to life? Because that that just doesn't sound right to a person who is a thinking person. That doesn't sound right. Oh, I fear God, so that's going to lead to life. I thought fearing God, like I'm just, you know, playing the person who doesn't believe I'm playing that part right now. It's not me. But a person who doesn't believe will be like, if I fear God, won't I I run away from God? Won't I want to be detached from God? Won't I, you know, want to ignore God or hide out from God if I'm fearing him? Um, But the Bible is the true word of God, right? So um, we're going to find out what that means. Or at least we're going to look at the scripture and be like, okay, 
God, speak to me. Because this is such a personal thing. When you have a, a relationship with Jesus, it's personal. But it's so good and it's so much there that you don't want to make it private. You want to make it public of who you believe in, right? Why you believe in Jesus as Lord and what did he do in your life to make you believe. And because of that, you fear God. You reverence him. You respect him so much that you're willing to lose friends, right? To get into the deep conversations of God with your loved ones, with your friends, and sometimes even with your enemies. Because the Bible says that he will prepare a table even with your enemies and they will be at peace with you because of what God is doing in your life. Because what God has already done in the lives of all those who say yes to him and no to this world. Amen. The world has really nothing that can satisfy a person's life. The world just has a lot of things, right? A lot of things that shine and glitter. Everything that's, that glitters glitters is not gold, my mom used to say. But listen, uh, we are here for another day, another opportunity to get inspired, another opportunity to get lit up by the fire of God. And so that way everybody can watch us burn spirit, supernaturally in the spirit. Amen. Not, you know, get light us up on fire in the physical. Amen. So let's pray. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests like that, don't hesitate to leave that on there. I'm the, I'm the most easiest person to reach out to, um, I believe. And I respond. I really respond. Amen. Uh, I had a late night you know, um, discussion, really late, uh, with a couple yesterday from Florida. And it was, just, it was amazing. The honesty that we express from one another, me and the couple... And I was like, you know, anytime, literally anytime I could be connected. Now, will I respond to three in the morning? Maybe, maybe not. Amen. Um, but for the most part, as long as I have breath on this earth, I'm available to all those who have questions, comments, concerns or prayer requests. Amen. And if I could help in any way, I will try my best. And if I can't do something, amen, we're going to go to some people that can do something. And if they can't do something, then ultimately we'll bypass everything, go straight to the word and see how God will handle situations. Amen. Because I'm just his agent, agent of change, right? Um, But God will be the main focus. The main reason why I do what I do is because God has changed my life. And because he changed my life and transformed me, I could 100% guarantee that he can do that for any single person. That calls on his name. I'm just totally convinced. At this point in my life, <laughs> there's nothing that can happen. No argument that could argue me out of the kingdom of God. Because I was not argued into the kingdom of God. I know where life is. And life is in God. Life is in Christ. And that's why I fear the Lord. Because I know it leads to life. Fearing God leads to life. And this is live life part two. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your deposit of wisdom your deposit of a Holy Spirit, God, and every single person who trusts in you and believes in you. I pray for those who are not believers. I pray for those who are going through abusive things, demonic influences over their lives. I pray for them that you would take them out, that you would help them, that you would comfort them, that you give them life and life in abundance, that you yourself, Lord God, will reveal yourself to every single person who does not believe right now in the name of Jesus. And for all my brothers and sisters in Christ, that you would give us the boldness to go and represent who you are, to go and preach the gospel, to go and reach one soul today for the glory of God. And I pray, Lord God, that you would give us a hedge of protection, health, strength, and everything that you have for us, Lord God. Let it be present in our lives and that we'll be active in the kingdom of God and that we will no longer be sitting on a couch. We will get up and do something because everyone matters in your kingdom and there's no one left behind in the kingdom of God. So I pray for everyone, my family and the families represented on the podcast listeners, on the viewers on the live. I pray for their families. I pray a hedge of protection over them, their household. I pray salvation forward to every single family member from the youngest to the very oldest in my family and in everyone's family. Family that's watching and listening all by the power of your love your grace and your mercy lord jesus i thank you so much for this time for this space for this place in jesus name i pray this by faith let's take a minute to share this out ladies and gentlemen and when i come back we'll be on proverbs nineteen twenty three, and then we're going to read another scripture and we're going to combine the two and talk about it amen i might not know everything but we're going to the one right we're focused on the one who knows everything 
every single thing about me and every single thing about you. To some that might be a little scary, to me, I invite that. Amen. Uh, I'm allowing this year the word to confront me. What about you? So I'll be right back after this minute and we'll get into it. And here we go. We're back. The fastest minute in all internet history just happened right there. And guess what? We can't get that time back. And that minute flies by, the minute flies by. So that's why I put a question on the screen. Uh, podcast listeners can't see it. But the question is, if you had 60 seconds left, who would you contact? Who would you connect with? Who would you speak to? What would you say? Amen. If you have one minute to live. And that's how, um, that's how important I think the gospel message is getting it out there. Amen. Because time is going right by so fast. Um, yesterday's gone. And everybody's like, the summer is almost gone. And I'm like, what happened? Like, it's like a blur. It's like a spur of the moment on this side of eternity. So Proverbs 19.23, let's read it. The Bible says, Fear of the Lord leads to life, bringing security and protection from harm. So already you see a benefit of fearing God. The benefit is security and protection from harm. How many people don't want that? Why would you want to be involved in something criminal? Why would you want to be in some, involved in some things that could harm you, that could hurt you, that could possibly take you out of here? No, you don't want that. I don't know anybody with a, in their right mind that wants to be hurt, that wants to be harmed, that, does, that wants to be insecure. But fear of the Lord leads to life. And because God is leading us to life, because we respect him, we reverence him, we um, actually read his word and activate the word in our, in our lives, that will bring you security and protection from harm. That, that's a great deal right there. Amen? Now, the opposite should apply, right? Common sense. If you don't fear the Lord, then you're going to live without security, without protection from harm. So anything goes at that point. That's why it's a grace message. The whole gospel to me is a grace message because when I was living apart from God and rejecting the whole gospel message, rejecting Jesus in my life and everything, I should have been, since I was unprotected, I should have been harmed. I should have been hurt. And I was hurt. And I was harmed. Amen. But God preserved me, saved me from before I got saved and born again. He saved me from a lot of situations. Well, how do you know it wasn't luck, Sam? Just luck, pure luck. How, how, do, how do you know it was just like you not just figuring a way out of things? Um, because there was no way out. And I don't believe in luck. I never did believe in luck, even before Jesus. So I know for sure, at least in my situations where I was surrounded by gangs, when this used to happen, when that used to happen, when I, I got close calls with catching some kind of disease because I was with some people, um, you know, sexually, God was responsible for getting me out of all of that. Oh, how do you know? Well, you don't have to believe me, amen? You know what's important about what happened in my life until I came to Jesus and what's happening now? You know what's most important to me? My experience, what happened to me. And I'm hoping, all I could do, I can't convince, and it's not even my job to try to convince anybody that God is real. It's not my job to convince anybody that Jesus is Lord. It's not my job. You know what my job is, amen? To live my life in the Lord loud enough so that way people will listen to his message, his gospel, his story. Amen. And Jesus, he, trust me, he knows how to prove himself to people who are looking for truth, who are looking for love. The fear of the Lord 
leads to life, bringing security and protection from harm. So how does fearing God lead to life? Think about it. Well, it will take you out of death. That's number one. Fearing God will take you out of death and will give you a way to focus on the life giver, the one who gives all life to mankind, to birds in the sky, to the fish in the sea, um, to the planets and the moon and the stars. He created that. Amen. It's like God rolled out a paint roller, amen, across the universe and put everything in place and holds everything in place at the same time. Science would tell you that if the earth is tilted a little bit this way, a little bit that way, uh, one, one way will burn and one way will go into the ice age. So it's perfectly designed. It's perfectly um, positioned so that way it's not too hot, not too cold. Yet, you know, who's who created gravity, right? Because the earth is spinning and, you know, we're a ball in the middle of the air somewhere. The stars, the moon, the planets, all of that, everything we see and everything we don't see was created by the hands of a holy, righteous, intelligent, amazing, merciful, graceful, right? Omnipresent, omniscient God. So I fear that God. I respect that God. I understand that mankind cannot understand everything that's out there. And that right there proves to me that there's more to this life here on earth. There's more to it. Amen. Amen. But people, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's a pride issue. I definitely know it's a heart issue. And they don't want to give reverence to the Lord. They don't want to give him the credit for doing what he already did. Amen. So they go around going to other humans, trying to gather up enough information about humanity and trying to gain agreement with other humans to say, yeah, there's no God. This was all an explosion. This was all evolution. This was all this, that, and the third. This was all because, you know, random um, luck, random chance, right? And they believe that because a lot of people will believe that because laziness, people don't want to investigate the claims of the Lord Jesus for themselves. They rather, you know, go onto a social media page, your YouTube page or anything like that and look it up, Google it. Um, does God really exist? And then whoever they um, like the most, right, on the posts, on the videos, on the blogs, They'll kind of like follow those people and be like, yeah, I told you there is no God because look, this person said and they found there's no evidence of this. That's being lazy because truly if we're talking about eternity right now, we're talking about eternal life, eternity, any mathematician will tell you um, that's a real long time. They can't even compute the number of days of eternity, but eternity, let's just say it's a billion trillion times a million zillion um, times infinity. That's eternity. Like, it's never ending. So why, on God's green earth, would I gamble with my life when it comes to eternity and not find out for my life what's real or not, if God's real or not? And ladies and gentlemen, the easiest way to do that, it's not that complicated. Oh, what do you mean? I have to, I have to search out all the religions. I have to study all the religions. Listen, there's not enough time in this world in my life and in your life to study out all the religions but there is time for you right now if you're listening or you're watching there's time for you right now to go to this guy that i'm talking about yourself with questions with your anger with your frustrations talk to him some people already are close they're close to speaking to god they want to speak to your universe they want to speak to the universe okay you could go ahead and speak to the universe. Let me know if the universe speaks back. But I want and I challenge you to take your level of thinking a little higher than the universe. Go to the God of the universe and speak to him and then see what happens. So that's Proverbs 19 and 23. Next one is Mark chapter 4, 25, where Jesus says like this, Mark 4, 25. To those who listen to my teaching, Jesus says, more understanding will be given. Isn't that a common sense? The more you hear the truth, you will understand. The opposite applies. <laughs> the less you hear of the truth, the less you will understand. Like, Jesus is the word of life. And sometimes it's so, like, plain that you don't even need to go into the Hebrew or the Greek. You don't need to do a whole big Bible study Sometimes Jesus just spoke it out there, put it out there, and it was so simple 
that people over, you know, over spiritualize things that he said. Because when Jesus spoke the kingdom, people were thinking like totally different things. Even the disciples were like, um, can you explain that to us? Because I don't understand what you just said. And sometimes he would be like, <laughs> okay, haven't you been with me for two and a half, three years and you still don't understand? But then he would still explain. Amen. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Ooh, that seems harsh, Sam. Why would why would Jesus do that? Why would he get take away even the little understanding that I have about him? Well, because that's the little understanding that you wanted. You were satisfied maybe with the little understanding about God. You were satisfied with a little understanding about our religion. You were satisfied with a little understanding about church. But Jesus loves you so much and loves me so much. He says, there's more to me. Hello, there's more. Why would you just want the little little bits and pieces? Why don't you go and find Jesus to be who he says he is? Amen. By the way, I don't think we find God. I always say that. Uh, but I'm trying to express um, what I'm saying here. I don't think I found God. I know um, that God was always there. I just didn't have a connection with him. So God found me. He saved me. Did anybody ever save God? No. Right? Then why would God need to be saved? He is the Savior. Did anybody create God? No. How could somebody create someone who already has been God is the great I am, the God who always is, who always has been, who never in history was not. He always has. He always is. He always has been. An incredible concept, right, of this this eternal God. So why is listening to Jesus so important? Because we already we already saw in Proverbs that, listen, fear the Lord leads to life. And if we're listening to this life-giving God then we'll have understanding. And when Jesus teaches us, amen, we'll have more understanding. If you listen to what he's saying, you will get more understanding. So this is like a continual progress of good stuff. You'll grow in your grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You'll grow in and mature in your Christian walk. You'll grow in God and God will give you that growth. So, but for those who are not listening, you see how Jesus is concerned, man. He's concerned with you. He's concerned with me. Are you listening? Like, this is amazing to me. Like, God will take time out of his busy schedule um, to interrupt our schedule to really offer us life by listening to his message, the gospel. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. So, you know, I'm the type of guy that'd be like this. I want it all. If God, if you're real, I want everything you have to offer. Amen. For me and my family. Why wouldn't I want what God is offering? I tried the other side of things. I tried what the world was offering me. And boy, was that a big fat lie. Uh, that was like pie in the sky stuff. That was like shh, I'm chasing after the wind. Right? But God gave me an opportunity to see both. He gave me the grace and the mercy to see both ends of the stick. And I come to a conclusion that only by serving God, only by believing in this holy, loving, amazing, eternal God, right? A forgiving God, a savior. Only through him did I really find my way, my identity in him, my identity in Christ. I didn't find a religion. If I wanted a religion, I would join a religion. Amen. And fall into place of all the rules and regulations of that religion. Instead, I'd rather choose Jesus. Daily. It's a day by day. I don't know if you notice, but we live day by day. I don't know if you understand that. or I know I understand that. Every day is a new day. Every day is a different day. If you go to someone and ask, hey, how you doing? How's your day? And they tell you, oh, it's the same old, same old. Um, that's a weird answer. Yesterday wasn't the same as today, and tomorrow won't be the same as today. That's a weird answer. Oh, you know, same old, you know, BS, or however they want to say, it, express themselves. Um, you know, same old thing, different day. Can't be. If the day is different, everything's different. You might be in the same routine. 
Like this is a, a holy habit that I have morning devos every day, uh, Monday through Friday. But that's a holy habit. But every day is different. I didn't say what I was saying to date. <laughs> like I said it yesterday. I probably won't say the same thing I'm saying today, tomorrow. If there's a tomorrow for me or for you, right? So every day is different. Don't believe this hype about, oh, you know, every day is the same. Nothing changes. Everything's changing. Uh, our our age is changing. Every day alive, we're one day closer to meeting the Lord. So these are the last days individually for every single person that you look at. Because we don't know when our time here on earth is done. So my suggestion is God's suggestion. My suggestion is, well, God's word is my, my authority. Amen. And, so, and this is not his suggestion. This is his word. Proverbs 19, 23, read the whole proverb chapter 19 for yourself. Then, if you want to read what Jesus said, Mark chapter 4, 25, read the whole chapter, Mark chapter 4. Put them together. You're going to find a little thread here about fearing God leading to life and listening to God will lead you to life. Amen? I don't know how, how other simpler way to put it. You want life, you want truth, you want love. Go to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want everything opposing that, then you will be doing yourself, literally. You will get into anything you want to get into. And if you notice that you can really do whatever you want. People think, oh, you guys are so restricted. Really, are we? Christians, are Christians really restricted? What are we restricted, we're restricting ourselves from? What are, are we restricted from? Go ahead. Look it up in the scriptures. Then you're going to find a scripture that's going to rock that paradigm. It's going to move that out of the way. God said we could do anything we want to do. But not everything we do will be beneficial. Do whatever we want. Amen. Um, God is so secure in who he is. He knows nothing is going to compare to what he could do in your life. You could try drugs, sex, alcohol. I don't suggest it. I don't endorse it. But you could try whatever you want. And when you compare that those activities to the activity of God in your life, nothing compares. So God is like, um, I'm giving you a, a chance to live. But if you want to live your life, then your will be done. But if you want to live Christ inside of you, through you, working his way in you and all that stuff, the good stuff, amen, you're going to go into a different level, a higher level, a greater level, amen, and you're going to live life. This is part two, probably the last part of it, probably. I don't know. But God bless you. I hope you got something out of this morning, Devo. And I'm hoping and praying that your day will go according to how God wants your day to go. Trust in him. Put your faith and your hope in Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth. Read the book of John for yourself. And that's the love of God expressed to you and to me. Amen. If you want to start somewhere with the Bible, if you haven't read the Bible in a long time or whatever like that, go to his word. Amen. Because his his word is always alive. Living proof. Right? Living proof that his word is true. His, his word is alive and active. Sharpened at any double-edged sword. And his word is able to do exactly what his word says it would do. In your life. Personally. In your life. Amen. God bless. I'm out. <laughs>